You know, Christmas just isn't complete without Christmas trees, but as the holidays go on, they start dropping their needles and they make a huge mess. I've heard of all sorts of mythical recipes for keeping needles on your trees. Well, let's get a bunch of trees and test all the methods we can find. It's fun to choose your own Christmas tree. Jerry likes this spruce tree. Jane likes the tall pine with long needles. Nothing evokes the feeling of the holidays like the smell of fresh pine on a real tree. But sometimes all the debris they drop makes you wish you'd gone with plastic. To put to the test mythical miracles touted to keep your tree fresh, Grant and Tori head off to go Christmas tree shopping, while Carrie stays back to make needle catchers. Basically, it's going to be a little platform with a ridge so the needles don't blow away, and a little hole where we can sweep all the needles into a little clear plastic container, and we can measure the volume of them by day or by week, depending on how long it takes for all the needles to fall. She staples six by six pieces of thin plywood to wooden base frames. Okay, one down, nine to go. As she continues building, the guys arrive at the Christmas tree farm. But as they drive through the gate, they run into a little problem. Tori and Grant are used to being stopped at the door, but that's usually when they're trying to get into a fancy restaurant. It's not exactly a great first impression. Yeah, just go down to the tree farm and get us some trees. Luckily, John, the owner, is an easygoing guy. John, nice to meet you. I'm Tori. Grant, nice to meet you. Sorry about the sign. No problem. No problem. You heard it. John's preferred method of keeping his trees moist is plain and simple. Uh, we put them in water. Water? Yeah. Anything you put in there is apt to impair this uh, physiology of this tremendous suction developed by the capillary action. Water is the best you can use. So what does he think about other people's crazy concoctions? Well, I think people will go for their thing that they like best. They empathize with this tree, of course, and they want to feed it something they like. Grant and Tori pick out 10 Douglas firs, all the same size. Okay, definitely, definitely not mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was a kid, we couldn't afford ornaments. Their trees selected and measured, they cut them down and load them into the truck. Before they leave, they have to do one more thing, put John's sign back up. Not again. Sorry. Did that sound good? That, that didn't sound perfect. good. It's not exactly a great last impression either. Really, I'm fixing it. John, here's some gratis airtime to say sorry. Back over at M7, the team is prepping their Christmas trees for the Great Needle Drop Fest. So I've taken the advice of the expert. He said to cut an inch above our original cut. This is going to open up the cells and allow whatever we put into our trays to be absorbed into the tree. The trees are inserted through the holes in Carrie's needle catchers and secured to their stands. All righty. Then Grant vacuums up any debris. We just want to make sure that when we do officially start the experiment, that we start everything with a clean slate. All the needles we collect from then on will be the ones that we're judging our experiment. One tree will be kept as the control and fed only water. Seven others will be treated with a different anti-needle dropping remedy, from the ordinary to the out there. First is a plant-friendly additive, fertilizer. Nice. Tori adds a ratio of 5% to a gallon of water and pours it into the stand. All right, time to kill a Christmas tree. Tree number two isn't so lucky. It gets to suck up a 5% mix of bleach. Bleach contains the toxin chlorine that kills bacteria, so maybe it'll keep it sparkly. My prediction is this thing is gonna be brown tomorrow. Next is a libation that's a whole lot more refreshing. Lemon, lime, and soda. I'm guessing that why you would use this versus, say, regular water would have to be either sugar, carbonation, or preservatives, because otherwise it is just water. Now, people seem to think sugar, maybe because it makes them hyper, will perk up the tree. 
Then Carrie crushes up and dispenses a popular pain reliever that some people believe stops the headache of cleaning up fallen needles. There we go. Next is a little blue pill that's a <laughs> mystery product. I'll let Carrie set it straight. I'm trying to dance around how to say this because people might have their kids watching. Um, um, Santa's little helper, daddy's little helper, uh, maybe mama's little helper. Santa's little helper contains nitric oxide. In humans, it increases blood flow, so it might help plants feel more vigorous, too. It's got to take a little time to take effect. I don't know, does it? Another possible trick of holding things firm is to use hairspray. So I am applying hairspray as a needle retention device. And what I think is going to happen is uh, I spray this all over the tree, and it creates a little barrier that will keep the moisture in and keep the needles on. You know, I like to uh, style the tree. I give it a little bit more fullness right around you know, here. Put the hairspray. Very nice. Very nice. The final tree is the ultimate Mythbusters special that takes the hairspray idea to a whole new stratosphere. The team suits up and breaks it down old school style. Bring it in. Ain't it funky? Funky. Like a happy hazmat team, they spray the tree all over with a clear coat of urethane. The idea is that we're going to completely encase the tree in a thin, clear layer of urethane. And that's going to keep all the moisture in. It's the ultimate extra super hold spray that also adds fabulous shine. So what do you think, uh, average American family, think they're going to be able to do this? Oh, totally. I have a spray roof in my house. Yeah. The trees will be monitored over a six-week period, and their needle-dropping results will be revealed at the end of the show. It's been a sweeping six-week challenge to find the best mythical remedy to keep your Christmas tree looking lovely for longer. The fallout has been carefully collated and counted, and it's time to reveal the winner. It's been six weeks since we started this needle drop experiment. I have to say, I think these results are really surprising. Definitely. I mean, it's obvious that the fertilizer is probably the worst remedy to keeping needles on a tree. Yeah, I would have never have guessed that. And it was only a 5% mixture to the water, but it lost four times as many needles as the control. I mean, there's a bucket filled with needles. We couldn't even get them all in our tube. More interesting to me is the fact that every other treatment that we tried did better than just water alone in the control. And you know what else is surprising is the uh, bleach and the Santa's Little Helper, they lost the least amount of needles. Yeah, but I think this myth should also be about aesthetics as well. And while the bleach kept a lot of needles on the tree, it turned it a really funny color. Santa's Little Helper, same thing, retained the most amount of needles, but it looked really, really sickly in the end. All right, well, we need to find a winner. So we're going to have to find a balance between the needles that fall off and the way the tree looks like after the six weeks is up. OK, well, that winner is definitely hairspray. It kept a lot of needles on the tree, and at the end of the six weeks, it still looked really nice. All right, so we're going to be using hairspray from here on in. Maybe you will. I think there might be a fire hazard involved with using hairspray on a dry Christmas tree. Just a, me. And that's a problem? <laughs> <laughs> Around you? Yeah. <laughs>